What's going on, everybody? Today is October 4th. It's Wednesday, and you are listening and watching to the Daily AI Show Live. And we are here today to try something a little bit new, something we've been thinking about doing, which is taking one day a week and talking about all the AI fun new stuff that's going on in like like the last seven days. And of course, we'll miss something here or there because inevitably we'll we'll put this show out live at 10 a.m. and some major announcement will happen at uh, 1035 as soon as we go <laughs> off air. Um, so we'll do our best to try to catch up on that in the following show. So we've all sort of collectively gone in our Slack channel and, and kind of put out different topics that we wanted to bring up. And um, it's it's pretty diverse, actually. It's it's not just three things. So want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to kind of bring up the things that caught their ear, caught their eye um, in the last week. Um, is it, Does anybody want to kick things off with their first one? And so there's some overlap here. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so this one is interesting. Um, uh, rewind, the Rewind Pendant, which was announced. Now, I was actually familiar with the software in the past. So if you go to rewind.ai, there's it's basically an AI meeting note taker that's more than a bot. And at the time I looked at it and I thought, that's pretty cool. And then I realized Mac only, and I don't own a Mac. In fact, I don't even have a real Apple in the house, you know, the eating guy. So I just kind of forgot about it. Anyway, the guys started talking about the Rewind Pendant. I vaguely recall seeing something about it online yesterday or today. I went, oh, okay, I better go look this up. And um, I'll, uh, actually, I might just share my screen if you want, since you want us to show a few things. Yeah, if you have it up, or, or I do, if you want to keep talking one one way or the other, I, I'll can I want to comment on it as he brings it up, which is interesting because rewind, as you as you know, the software version, as you're saying, Aaron, was basically it would record whatever you did on your computer in case you forgot what website you went to, it could, you could go back and ask it, which is really cool. I installed it and then immediately uninstalled it because I'm like, this is way too much, like somebody watching what I'm doing, and it was really interesting. Which is interesting because in the world of AI, there's either those people that are kind of like trying to put barriers on it. And then there's this company, which is like, I mean, going crazy <laughs> about a pendant. So go ahead and talk about the pendant. Okay. So this is what it's supposed to look like. They're taking pre-orders at the moment for $59. And I'm assuming that's US $59, <clears> which <throat> is um, not bad. They haven't confirmed a price yet, but they think it could be around the 59 or less. So if it's less than 59, you'll get a refund. Now, Initially, my first thought was it's a wearable pendant. It captures what you say and you what you hear in the real world, and then it transcribes, encrypts, and stores it entirely on your phone. My first initial thought for that was, yeah, no, nah, I'll give that a miss. And then I scrolled down the page, and I watched the video. It was a little bit boring, but I got to use cases, and I saw number one. I went, holy, <laughs> number one, that's me. <laughs> I, I don't have the world's best memory at times, and I have my partner Michelle and I have had many discussions about me going out <laughs> to buy something that she wants and forgetting about it. And I thought that's perfect. And I record a lot of meetings that I'm involved in anyway, so I can go back and reference them because I've had occasions in the past where I've forgotten something important. But the problem with recording, I mean, I've got an app on my phone to do voice recording, but then you got to go and listen to it. And what I like about this is that it does the transcription on the fly as well. So I, like I was just telling Jimmy before we came online, I said, if this comes out, when this comes out, I'm almost guaranteed I'm going to buy myself one of these um, for a variety of reasons. But I also think this would be a really cool product for people dealing with memory loss issues like, you know, um, uh, Alzheimer's and that kind of stuff. Now, if they're, cognitively not able to interact with a computer or a phone or something it's not going to be great but if they just forget things um then i think it's going to be a really powerful tool for that but for me i love this i think this is a really cool idea and i'm excited about the fact that it's also going to be pretty cheap as well so you know definitely worth having um and it's on my to buy list for sure yeah i would say my my quick thought on this is like not an always um i i don't I'm pretty sure in my life I don't need it um, remembering everything I said or got wrong to my wife. So uh, we won't turn it on for that. Um, <laughs> I don't see how that how that positively impacts my life. Um, but, uh, I can think I of times where that might help me win an argument. So that's not a bad thing. So. Well, it's like, I don't know if you, Aaron, you probably don't have them in, the, in the, or maybe Carl, but there's, there's uh, American football commercials right now. And it's like for insurance or something. And like, 
the father and son or the husband and wife and they throw the flag and they're like, oh, really? Yeah. You're going to throw the flag and then the referees come in with the replay and it replays yeah. what happens so it can prove one of them right or wrong. So that's what this reminds me of. Anyway, real quick, because I know we have lots to go on. I don't want to get stuck on any one topic. Um, is I would say I could see me throwing the pendant on while I'm sitting here at the computer. Um, I do have lots of conversations throughout the day and it would be nice if there was a very hands-off always running transcription where I could just maybe, I don't know if it works like a pen or click it on, click it off type thing. Um, and I just could see the transcription that works with Otter and all that stuff. But like, as we've proven, that's not as easy as it always seems. So just having that done and not having to log into Zoom and log into all that, um, whether it would pick up though, what's coming out of the speakers and transcribe that just as well. I think that would be yeah, curious if, you know, Otter people know they're being recorded, but you have it, one of these things that you're kind of secretly yeah. recording them, yeah. which is well, kind of interesting. Yeah. And I want to, yeah. I want to piggyback. Oh. I'm not sure if it, nobody had mentioned this. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. Humane.ai also released a wearable that is a little bit different. It records video, but also has a projector. So you can put your hand down and it's, you put it, it's, it's mounted here to your shirt and you actually mm. can give you text readouts that projects onto that, your yeah. hand. Which is so cool. I guess they're they're kind of competing, and then the third one is of course is the is the Meta glasses. So it's like Meta is going to be doing this in a lot better way, in, in my opinion, because it's going to have video and audio. So like, who's going to buy who is what I want to know. Like, I feel like these these startups they're great creating this tech. Either they're going to buy them and then shut them down, like Meta, and so they they don't have a competitor, or they might integrate it into their their IP. I don't know. So just one more use case that I'm thinking of. Um, I was primary caretaker for my mother during her Alzheimer's journey. Mm. And there were times at the, you know, I don't know, last three years where she couldn't tell me what was, uh, what the doctor had said. Right. Mm -hmm. Or she couldn't explain something that had happened. Right. She's trying to get me to understand something and I have no idea that would have been really useful. So Aaron, yeah. um, for people who are undergoing, a medical situation in which they're not going to be necessarily able to communicate what the doctor has said or what's happened, um, that could be helpful. I do yeah. think that all of these are um, going to be a quantity problem, right? Uh, is there an easy way to get through a ton of information that you don't want to get to that piece of information that you do? But, yeah. 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 Good I agree. It's interesting the, the wearables, the look, the wearables um, market is only going to expand and grow and AI is just going to get more integrated. Who knows? Maybe this same technology will just be embedded into a micro or a uh, Apple watch. Uh, I'm surprised it's not in your phone already, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is through apps and stuff, right? So it'll just, it will be interesting to see mm -hmm. if, you know, Apple just further explores this with things like what they're already doing with their Apple health and how that integrates with the watch and whether there's, some of these type features to your point beth i know when i watched my wife's um grandmother go through you know the alzheimer's journey and stuff like that the early signs were like she just kept pe feeling like people were stealing from her because she was misplacing things and couldn't remember but to her it was very real that she had placed it wherever she had placed it and so i can see it helping those early stages in that transition of helping somebody who kind of maybe knows that they're not remembering everything and it's scary to have mm -hmm. that backup recorder that's like hey i got you you know like I don't know, maybe that gr her grandmother could have said, I'm placing the keys on the desk. And then that right. would have been transcribed, <laughs> you know, and then, and that could have been helpful. So I don't know. Um, all right, what else, what else we got? Cause we, I know it's, we're not gonna get through everything if we if we go too long on any one particular topic. Um, well, I got a really quick one. one. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the new uh, model that came out from Stability, uh, the stable LM3B. Essentially, it's a 3 billion parameter model, so it's designed to be on a mobile device, right? Um, mm. But it performs like a 7 billion parameter model. So, um, but, the, but the most interesting part is it's released on Creative Commons, so we can see a lot of uh, adoption in the open source world. Um, so we might see those more personalized and specialized um, uh, language models and, and programs, AI, on your mobile device. So kind of speaking towards what we were talking about is having all of that available to you uh, on your phone. Yeah. 
Yeah, it kind of reminds me of what Zuck was saying on the Lex Friedman podcast about like, yep, okay, right now it takes a scan and it's a multi-hour process. Eventually, we hope that you can just use your phone and, and you know, solve that same problem, you know? So uh, I, I think as all of this technology typically does, it scales down back down to the, the wearables, the phones, the things, the eyeglasses now, these type of things that it'll just be embedded in there um really that's that stuff's kind of really exciting i think that really that's crazy. that's the new wave i think a lot of the, the smart people in this space not us the real smart people like the ones that are pushing the the, the narrative uh they're saying stuff like <laughs> we're not that smart come on uh, and they're uh, they're saying stuff like the second wave like this is the first wave we're about to be it started with gbt and it's gonna this is what ethan mullick said and it's gonna end with like the launch of Gemini, which is multimodal. And so I think the next wave possibly after that, maybe it's in the second wave is this whole concept that we're kind of skirting around is all of this stuff is going to be on one platform, one device, one hardware device that might be a few years out, obviously, but all this tech is there might be a Google version of it. It might be an Apple version of it, but I think that that's the way everything's going not to get on a tangent, but all this new tech we're talking about is starting to give light bulbs off to me. Okay. I, I want to throw in a few things here. One, one is um, that a lot of the application effort that's been applied by people on this team and, uh, and elsewhere has to do with, advancing sales and marketing and using LinkedIn to large degree as the foundational data to do that. Well, there's a lot of little, um, uh, you know, applications that have been built that'll help you digest uh, people's profiles and create new ways to reach out to those people with, you know, personalization and so on. Well, LinkedIn has announced that they're going to incorporate AI broadly and deeply into all of their services. So they're going to offer this to you without you having to hire an application developer to you know do something within LinkedIn. So I don't know all the details of that one, but I think that's a pretty newsworthy development uh, for LinkedIn. In this case, do you have like an example, Andy? I, I really don't have anything because I just read about it this morning. And mm -hmm. uh, does anyone here you know have that? It might be as fresh as today or yesterday. I don't you know. Say I think I can extrapolate on that really yeah. quickly because if you just look at everything that LinkedIn's doing and everything I've been focusing oh. on in my job for the last couple of years, you know, it's very easy to deploy what we're seeing almost across all tools. I just saw it yesterday with Seismic, which is this semantic natural language search options. And of course, every new product puts it out as some revolutionary thing. And of course, it's the same, it's the same technology using Pinecone or whatever they're using on the back end to do the vector-based storing. Um, but it's very, very important, you know, that that stuff is there. So I think going into sales navigator, which is an amazing tool. I use it all the time with my clients for like prospecting, but also um, engagement. And I, we use it more for that. So seeing it embedded in there, it's already connected to the CRM, but if you're able to start asking natural language questions in sales navigator, that not only pulls the information in from a profile or a company, but also is connected to the CRM and can pull back that data in a natural way versus just showing maybe that Salesforce, you know, um, sell or whatever that would be called. Beth. And there you can tell I'm not a Salesforce person, um, whatever it would be that that data pulls back. And then also we're already seeing it, but on the free side, like creating content. Um, I just heard somebody that I, that I'm friends with and they said, writing content on LinkedIn is now a commodity, meaning it's so easy to do that mm -hmm. it's no longer special. And that it's something everybody needs to be doing because it's gotten to the point where it's, it's easy to produce. Whether that's quality, we can leave that to a different conversation, but that's where I would see it embedded because of what Microsoft is doing. And of course they own LinkedIn. Yeah. So two other little things that are really at, at the edge over here, maybe toward Washington, DC. One of them is that the NSA announced their new AI security center, uh, which mm -hmm. is going to really deep dive AI application within the military and security arena. So that's that's related to Rewind, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then the other one I thought was very interesting uh, is GlowTrack, which was, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, um, a phosphorescent or fluorescent uh, dye that you can put on an animal or on yourself to assist cameras in tracking and modeling your movement and behavior. 
Uh, so you, you were talking about avatars, ultimately a representation of you. Well, you might actually be able to do motion capture of your body right now off of a camera using these fluorescent dyes, which is non-invasive. You know, you don't have to put stick glue stickers onto you at various points. So you can literally paint this on yourself, and then the uh, camera can capture that and then represent you as an avatar in space. So I thought that was an interesting technical advancement that scientists at the Salk Institute developed, this fluorescent dye glow track, it's called. Yeah, I could see huge, huge implications of that, like with um, people who are um, perhaps have disabilities or movement disabilities and being able to use AI if those motions are being tracked to help them create more natural fitting and you know oh my god i can think of like there's probably so many cool ways that that'll be able to help people too which is really cool and of course the motion capture you know my buddy who was in um uh in animation you know they used to call it roto well it's not, i guess it's still called rotoscoping rotoscoping was when you would in my yeah. basic understanding nobody that knows this don't kill me is like <laughs> when you would put like a piece of paper over a movie like the beauty and the breeze scene where they're dancing and if you wanted to animate that you might actually like lay a piece of paper over and try to like re-mimic that and now i think there's like going to be so many cool ways for these student animators you know to use a tool like a die or something like that and instantly capture motions and stuff like that for what they're the project they're doing. So I think it was like a Jimmy green screen was what you're saying, kind of like a a movable green screen, right? I mean, like you're saying like yeah, for what Andy's yeah. saying, that, that would be pretty amazing to see these tools because yeah. it sounds like it's probably low barrier of entry. Um, it probably doesn't require a whole lot of complex things, assuming the die mm -hmm. isn't super complex or it doesn't hurt the environment. These things, um, but that would be a, that would be super cool. I like that idea. That's cool, Andy. I, I hadn't heard of that one. So we're getting some uh, interaction from our comments. Uh, Stacy would prefer uh, stickers over die. <laughs> and I, I might do. I would want to know a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, I can only I, think, picture what that looks like. You're just digging a whole bath and I'm covered in goo. <laughs> like it's weird. Hey, hey, Stacy, I, I think it's I think it's actually not in the visible light spectrum. So mm. you, it, you put it on you, but it, you don't see it. The camera can mm. see it. Like Maybe a, like a, a UV spray light, bottle and it's really light, mild. Actually, That'd be yeah. kind of neat, yeah. There's an invisible uh, liquid tracking device that you're going to pour all over your body, <laughs> and you will not actually be able to tell when it's no longer there because there. it's an invisible tracking device. <laughs> oh, well, um, I can imagine just it. having a um, spray, uh, spray paint version, right? right? And you just tag whatever you want. I'm yeah. sure the initial uh, research is to help tracking in like, you know, herd movements and animal yeah, right. uh, husbandry and, and stuff like that. But yeah, it'll be interesting it's, how it's it influences it in, in the human world. It's referenced specifically to the um, improvement of the ability of AI to uh, model uh, right. yeah. movements. So. Because yeah. it's because previously you were identifying you were mapping like physical um uh touch points maybe for your for your 3d map and this mm -hmm. would just exponentially uh increase the possibility of that well you know I'm how it was to, you know no uh no no mocap type uh, technologies too because there's there's basically like using multiple cameras to get you at different angles as opposed right. to having all of the uh, you know micro points or tracking points. So I'm wondering how uh, how you would adopt or could you use both of that uh, technology to get you some sort of uh, hybrid model out of it. I think if this Very isn't cool. in the next uh, Mission Impossible or Born, you know, identity movie, uh, they've severely missed out. You know, it's like somebody walks past somebody in a crowd and they pss, pss, spray them really quick and they get hit with the invisible dye. That, that's and already been in a movie. Yeah, Ethan Hunt movie. has a wearable that makes him walk with the same gait and limp as the guy he's trying to do because they connected with him and tracked him on the cameras. You know. Oh yeah. So like just full all cameras, just spray your face, that's and it. then you can, and you, you, for any camera that's recording you, you just put in the the face of whoever you're uh trying to impersonate yeah we, <laughs> and by the way yeah. Stacey, yeah. 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 okay i know we're uh, we're about two-thirds of the way in and we have not talked about probably like maybe the biggest announcement of the last week was actually chat gpt 
and some of the things they're doing. Um, they had some really big announcements. Um, vision and voice were two of the, the big areas. And it's been a topic of con um, not concern, topic of uh, conversation all through the AIX community, the AI exchange community, as well as our internal Slack channel that we uh, use to talk about the show. Um, some of us have some parts of it, some of it don't. I only have um, ChatGPT uh, voice and it's on my mobile app, although I think Beth, you told me it's not, it's not even available on desktop anyway, but it's yeah. on my uh, mobile app. It's really, really cool. We've talked about Pi before, and I will tell you what, last Friday I had a 30 minute conversation using ChatGPT voice and it blew me away. And I was like, dang, I really like Pi and I already think this is better. Um, it was really, really impressive. I did a 30 minute brainstorming session walking around my house, which was cool not to be chained to a, co to a computer or sitting down anywhere. And I was just wandering around my house. My wife thought I was talking to my dad downstairs. She's like, who are you talking to? And I was like, you know, Actually, my friend. Yeah. You, don't need to know her name. you don't need to know her name. It doesn't matter. All that matters is she's helping me. So, um, no, I, I brainstormed around walking around the house or whatever. And uh, I, I love I was so fun to be able to just go. No, OK, I would get an answer back and then I'd say, no, I, I see what you're saying there, but. That's not exactly what I was talking about. Let me give you some examples of, of the kind of answers. I And I was just riffing off the top of it. And immediately it was so nice for it to come back and go, ah, I see what you're saying there. You weren't looking for this. You were looking for that. Do you want me to go give you a couple of examples of that? I'm like, yeah, give me one example so I can see if you're on the same page as me. One example. Hey, this is really great. Can I get five more in that area? And let's start expanding down this role. I mean, as fast as I'm talking right now is as fast as I was talking to uh, GPT voice. And it was flawless. Were her responses, uh huh, uh huh. Continue talking, I Brian. I don't need a GPT right. in my house for that. That already happened. <laughs> uh, Both for my daughter and my wife. Uh huh. He's talking about AI say, again. I, just, just. I have just to say, I go. have voice as well, but I haven't used it like that, Brian. I need to start playing with it. So, uh, please, yeah, please do. When you first mentioned it, I went, uh, no, I think I've only really just poked it for 10 seconds i think i'm missing out on it so definitely want to dig into that but excited to see vision when it comes well so, and and vision you now? said vision uh, voice but I'll also dolly three dolly three oh yeah. right exactly yeah, well, yeah. Uh, let's, let's, which let's, is let's, in ChatGPT. right yeah right so, so before you go to dolly three vision. though let's explain what vision is because so, i don't think it, we've actually said it on this show it's it's not it's not ChatGPT looking at you. <laughs> yeah, so let, let me take a stab at this because what yeah. what I really like about this is if you start with what ChatGPT did back when it was launched in November and it kind of blew everybody's mind. This is the next biggest thing that blew everybody's mind. And okay. uh, you take a picture of whatever you want to take a picture of it, and it has the ability to analyze it. You can take a picture of your cupboard and say, give me a recipe for a meal that uses these ingredients. You can take a picture of a bike stand, like you're saying there, and the example says, show me how to fix this, how to raise and lower this seat. And it oh, knows yeah, how to bad. do so. So I think the beauty of this is, is that you're going to have not just the text input that you were able to ask GPT for now, it has the ability, again, vision, to look at a scenario and extrapolate from that. It is, that's a whole yeah. other leap. This is game changing as we hate using that word all the time, but words, but yeah, it's a big deal. Can, can I, uh, Vision. yeah, go. Can I go. show you like an example of that? Like I was, I started yeah, actually please. implementing this in business yesterday and, or a couple of days ago when I got it. And so essentially what I've been doing is starting to upload, <clears throat> um, I think somebody needs to put it on. I got oh, you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, for example, uh, just GA4 straight up, like here's the, and then I asked it a bunch of stuff. And then, yeah, it's analyzed not only what are the 10 things, 10 insights, but now it's like 10 actions. And then started, then I started feeding it like more complex, like graphs, things that if you try to put it into advanced data analytics, you have to do a lot of prompting to get it to understand that stuff. It just like it picked it all out. So I feel this is the complement to like if you're doing a data analysis and actually looking at like business analytics, 
this is the complement to ADA. If you can do, if you can use both of these things at the same time, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Like feed it Salesforce data, feed it, you know, um, HubSpot data, whatever kind of, even Tableau or Power BI, th the things that I can in review versus trying to upload that into ADA is, yeah, to me is too, like, just from a business sense, I, that is to me the real game changer. Yeah. And just to be quickly to answer Stacy's question, uh, this is available in a rollout. So like some yes. of us on the on this show have it, some don't. I had I had Dolly first, and then Vision came second, and some others had the opposite. So this is a weird. I don't know how they're deciding different regions. Like some of us are yeah. in Canada, some of us are in Perth, Australia. I don't know what's going on, but that's that's to answer your question, Stacy. You might not have it yet. And sometimes it rolls out on the app first. Sometimes it rolls out on yeah, the app. There's really no, no wait, wait, wait. reason. Robert, are you saying you have two of the three flavors? Yes, I have Vision and I have Dolly 3. I don't have voice. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do so, you have any so flavor? That means it? Robert's ahead well, in the race. I just we're checked. Trying to catch up. <laughs> I just checked. I've got a can. Can you see that? I've got yeah. a, I just got it. I hey. Hey. Cool. It's, I can put it's up, listening uh, to our show. Photo. Let's just get it to you. Yes. <laughs> I can uh, upload an image or I can upload a file. Riveting content. Watch our panelists oh. all check I, their phones. Rose, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, really quick, I think the, the one use case that I'm most excited for vision is product development. Because yes. Oh, gosh, yes. yeah, I've seen I've seen some examples where people have just taken a picture of their uh, wireframes that they put on their whiteboard and was able to work with that and develop a app and code yeah. for right. all of that just from taking that picture. And I'm yeah. like, wow. man, that's gonna make dev time. So well, it, yeah. I, I, I posted, I, I asked ChatGPT, like, what are the use cases for, for right now, pure image to text in general, like small, I, I put, put it into just any small to medium sized businesses. And the, I could put 10, 20 more, but I feel like if you actually looked and started experimenting with this, once you get it, I think there's so many different use cases, which yeah it just got me to my comment yesterday do you know how powerful this thing is now with vision voice and and image generation all in one it's crazy but to to, to segment off one big news that i don't think anyone kind of thought like was listening to was amazon bedrock was announced and you can actually i think everyone can actually get it so you just need an aws account which you can get and they'll even giving you a free one year to use a bunch of their services and Can so you give us a quick uh, breakdown of what red rock is? yeah just to really i guess quickly show everybody um oh sorry i didn't mean to remove it i removed the call. can you show your screen again i meant to just yeah. bring it back up yeah yeah Uh, just a quick while you're lining up andy um carl uh, stacy you mentioned you're on android um, I'm an Android user as well, and I've got um, voice, but I don't have vision yet. So I don't think it makes any difference what you've got. It's just when they decide to give it to us. Right. Uh, yeah, so so for AWS, for there's two things, Amazon Bedrock and Amazon SageMaker. So you can build, like what it says, you can build, train, deploy machine learning models at scale. So for example, now they, they said cloud, but that cloud is rolling out slowly. So only certain select accounts will get it. I know our business account got it, but like personal account, you get it. You do get to try different models, like a whole bunch of the Llama models. I really interested to try the Falcon 7B, which if you actually download it, it's 400 gigabytes and you need, I think, I don't know how many, what kind of GPUs you need, but it's insane what you need to. So just to, to be able to try that. Um, so yeah. But these are it, all housed it, on their cloud. So you don't, you don't have to download yeah. them. Yes, right. you don't have to download, and and you can all try computer vision, like ex essentially what you probably get with Google Cloud and their Vertex AI and Gen App Builder. It's pretty much comparison, although you get the AWS Cloud with it. So, just something if you are wanting to test something out, 
something a little bit different and kind of under the radar, I think I would go to um, Amazon and, and try um, SageMaker and Bedrock. Uh, so another point about Amazon is that, and uh, this may be tired because it's eight days old instead of seven days, but um, <laughs> Amazon made a, a commitment in the form of an investment to Anthropic, Claude, mm -hmm. uh, and that's laying out the competitive landscape of the major providers, you know, very clearly. And so that's a big one. Which is interesting because Google, a while back, I'm not sure, 12 months ago, they put in a uh, Temp they have 10% ownership for $300 million. So Google owns a piece of it too. So they're like, they're all incestuous. All these companies are owning all of each other. Yeah. It's so weird. I think well, Google's going to take it, take into the next round because I, I feel Anthropic, I think there was news where they were saying Anthropic wanted to be at least 200 billion or something around uh, new numbers around their next round of funding. And Google's yeah. looking to participate in that. So yeah, it's going to be pretty big. Yeah. Carl, in the terms TLDR. of Bedrock versus um, uh, versus Google Cloud, yeah. Uh, in turn, like we've previously discussed, that <laughs> Google Cloud uh, it, um, is uh, is a sort of a high hurdle uh, to get over. Is yeah. Bedrock similar or? Uh, well, I feel like Bedrock's a little bit behind in terms of Google Cloud because Google has a lot of the. It, it's it's actually deployable and they're not still rolling out certain features like yeah. you can with Amazon Bedrock. I know we are in a process to build, like we have a project to build um, a chat bot for the company for Confluence in Amazon as like a, an experiment. So we get a lot of people to try to build on it, but it's brand like talking to the Amazon um, solution architects, like they're still giving us, hey, this is what Lambda is. This is what Amazon Cloud is. This is what you can do. And it's like, it's very, I don't know if it's basic, but there's just like, they're laying the groundwork while Google is definitely, you know, going to the next level, which I think we missed, but I know we're getting around uh, late is Google Gemini, which apparently is supposed to be launched anytime soon now, which is apparently 20 times more powerful than GPT-4. So that's a pretty big thing. Look and for. build multi-modal right. from day one. <laughs> yeah, let's make it the TLDR Ooh. lightning round. Everybody uh, gets yeah. three. Everybody yeah. gets three. Ready? What, one, Go, one, Jimmy. One, oh, no, everybody gets one, one. One thing. Uh, <laughs> one thing. AI news that I'm most excited about. Um, the the potential deal between um, OpenAI and Johnny Ive to develop a hardware AI device. That's what I'm most interested in, in in right now, speaking to what Robert was saying early on about it all coming to uh, everybody having a wearable device that has your personal AI. That's what I want to see. Go. All right, mine is um, barred memory. Uh, it's pretty much just like custom instructions, except it seems like you can grab it in mid conversation as opposed to having to come up with it and then set it. And that like the fact that it can be within the, f the stream of thought or the flow, I think is, uh, is a use case that makes sense for, for a lot of users. Uh, GPT starting to put everything in their one uh, interface. So you're going to have vision, you're going to have um, Dolly three, the, those additional is just, just where they're going. They're going multimodal and that's, that's given them much more stake longstanding moat against these other big players. So that's what excites me. Uh, one thing that uh, I don't think we mentioned, but it was related to what uh, Juni was talking about is uh, the release of stable diffusion too. Um, okay. I'm going to um, rewind, so I'll just re reiterate that. Um, uh, and also, I'm really looking forward to getting Dali 3 in ChatGPT. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, Dali 3 was going to be mine. I'm just bringing this up as a use case. Uh, my brother literally texted me this morning. My, brother's, my older brother is like two and a half years older. And he's like, man, I know I'm getting old. I'm getting more like dad because I'm screaming through the, the door right now to tell his teenage son to get done with the shower. And his teenage son, my, my nephew was yelling mm -hmm. back like, I'm waiting for the water to get warm. And my brother's yelling back through the door. It's been warm for 10 minutes. And I was <laughs> laughing at my brother. He was laughing at himself. What I loved about it, though, is I created this cartoon in like 
30 seconds and sent it back to him just as a laugh. Mm -hmm. But like, that's just between me and my brother and it made him laugh. And I was like, check this out. I just created this in Dolly three really quick. But my point to it is number one, it's pretty good. And it's pretty funny. But the reason I actually bring it up is because I think the, the ability more and more so with these tools to be able to go to a prospect or somebody in the sales and be like, oh, this just happened in this conversation and such and such client would get a kick out of seeing this and it could be really tailored and all that to be able to come up with this stuff in like a Dolly 3 inside ChatGPT's interface, I think is going to be crazy. So that's mine. Yep. Yep. Is, that it? is everybody gone? Oh, and real quick, Stacy. Yes, we did talk about Rewind. It was the first part of uh, Rewind the yep. to the beginning yeah. of the show. Yeah. And then you'll hear us talk about <laughs> I see what you did there. Rewind. This is your rewind. Uh, all right. For those old enough to know what rewinding is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I just go backwards? Be kind. Be kind rewind. Rewind. Be kind. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think, did we miss anybody? Did everybody get their, their one in? We're all good. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Well, hey, you know what? For a new format and lots to talk about and some even some great comments from the uh, audience. So thank you guys so much for your comments and, and engagement there. I don't think we did too bad, but only six minutes over. We'll get better at it. We'll get more streamlined and, and, next and week. And for our audience, please send us messages. What do you think of our show? Any suggestions or ideas yeah. or comments or praise? We'd love to get some of that so we could uh, tweak our show. So thank you, Stacy, And thank you, John. Yep, absolutely. All right, that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow on Friday with two more topics that you can't wait to talk about in AI, or at least we can't wait. And uh, we will see you guys then. Until next time, see ya. Ciao. Uh -huh.